In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Tag Zito, a word cloud tool that offers you a little more flexibility with design. But before you get started making a Tag Zito, there are two things you're going to need to have. Um, one, you're going to need to have an idea of what kind of shape cloud you want to make because Tag Zito offers you the ability to um, customize your word cloud shape. The second thing you need to have um, is a list of words, a paragraph, an excerpt, etc., in a in a word document that you want to use for the words in your cloud. Um, to just to help out with the way it looks, make sure you copy and pasted this list several times so you have a good long um, bank of words to use. Uh, once you have those things ready to go, you can go into Tagzito. The URL is www.tagzito.com. You see here. Once you bring up the start page, you will go to the. There's a bluish colored box to the right side of the page about in the middle with the start now link if you click on that start now link it will take you to where you need to get started at um where you put the words in this load right here we'll get to that in just a second i want to introduce you to the respins which is what tag zito calls when it changes the way his words look the first respin is color and all it does is it it makes the colors of the words themselves change for example you see the word mother right here by where my my arrow is um, if I hit if I hit color, you will notice that that mother color changes to the different blue tones that are in this cloud. Um, that is that is the color change respin. The theme respin is the what changes the colors completely, along with sometimes with the background. I um, mean, you can change it with your respin here, and just kind of hit it and see what you get. If you want to pick one yourself, if you go to your theme menu here, um, there are several you can choose from. If you look right here at fall, if you look around fall around the color box, you see it's black. If I click on fall, that that tells you that that the background is a color. In this case, it's going to be black or blue or white or white here to be black, a, a kind of a tan khaki color here. That tells you um, with the outline, the border outlines of these color squares tell you what the color of the background is going to be. So when you change your theme, which is the actual colors of your cloud that way, your font is of course fonts you can run through with your respins and change the fonts that way as it respins at the bottom. It would change your fonts to just one in this list. Or if you want to get to the font menu, there are not an, an overabundance of fonts you can choose from. Um, you can pick one. I'm going to pick license plate. I'm just going to X out. I'm just going to respin across on here at the bottom. It's going to change my words to the license plate font. Um, you can, again, you can respin through, or you can even lock it down so it doesn't change. Um, your orientation, it changes the direction of your words itself. Like if I'm going to pick more orientation, I can respin. There's only four choices. It is vertical, horizontal, horizontal, and vertical, or any. Um, do you see this is horizontal and vertical? Um, I'm going to go through and show you the four. Any is when they can just go any direction, um, as you may have guessed. The horizontal is when they, the words are lined up, and, and horizontal, every word in the in the cloud itself is horizontal. Um, vertical is just the same. They're going vertically up and down. And horizontal and vertical is um more linear looking everything is going up and down or, or side to side it's kind of adds a, a little bit sometimes this is easier to look at as a little bit more of a, a clean look to it sometimes depending on what you're doing on um, the layout is your next respin the x out of that the layout is your next respin um all it does i'm gonna respin through and let you see what it does it just kind of changes um just a few subtle things about it and i'm i'm gonna hit it a few times and i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about if I look here at this earth here, it's kind of a, a camouflage green color. If I go through my layout and I respin it, I'm going to try to watch that and see what happens to it. It is now kind of a, a reddish color. And it, the one that has jumped around, it, it just changes slight position and slight colors. Um, that you, It's a real subtle change. You have to really look closely. I really don't mess too much with the um the layout respin is change position of the words i really don't mess with it too much but the final respin is all and of course if you respin all it's going to change the color theme font orientation the whole thing um and you can click through that a few times this is a quick and easy way to find something you like without having to go through each and every respin in each and every menu um under all these respins is your options choices under the options heading you will find your shape respin which is the actual shape of the word cloud we'll get to in just a second um history is just what you have done on tag zito you click history and go back and look at what you're doing and the last one we'll talk about um in just a second is word and layout options this one is where you fine tune things a little more um i will we'll get to that after we do a tag zito here but I told you at the beginning that when you start a tag zero, there's two things you need to have. You need to have an idea of the shape you want to use, and you need to have a bank of words. 
Um, so what I did was I took into a Word document, I took all the words to the Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. And um, what I'm going to do to get them in is you just, I'm going to control all, control A and highlight the entire document. Then I'm going to control C and copy it. One kind of finicky thing about Tag Zito is when you put your words in under the load option up here, if you click on load, it's going to bring up your load menu. Once you put your words in into the enter text box, you have to use your keyboard. You cannot right click. If I right click, it's going to, it's going to do that. That's not, that's not going to let us do it. So just click into your enter text and control V and paste them. Um, I'm going to do it a few times. I did it three times that time just to give me a, a good long list of words. Every once in a while when you do it, it's going to put them in one line straight across. Um, even if it does that, as you see here, it's going to go over and all. It's going to keep going and going and going and going like that. Um, they will do that sometimes just because it goes that way. It does not really affect your cloud at all. But once you get your words in, you can hit submit and then X off of this box and you can see what you have done. It has taken the words from the I have a dream speech and added them into my, my work, my world looking cloud here. Um, now that I've done that, you know, I, I want to, I want this cloud to have something to do with Martin Luther King Jr. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to my shape and I'm going to find one of the preloaded shapes that Tag Zito offers that I think may go with Martin Luther King Jr. So when I use my class, what I do is I'll show you what we did in my class of him in a minute. But what it is, I talked to my kids about what these historical figures and for Martin Luther King Jr., for instance, what he stood for. And one thing he always said was love. So I'm going to go through here to the preload is that I'm going to find a heart. Because of course, second graders always say heart stand for love. I'm going to use, um, just use this heart right here just because it's, it's different looking. It's going to re-spin my words into a heart. And it's going to have the nice outline here that you can actually tell as a heart. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to change my all respin just see what I can come up with just to, just to kind of see what we get. Um, you don't have to, you can stick with what you have. But once you've done this and you've put in your shape and you put in your words, now you can come down to your word and layout options. This is, brings up a, a menu, an option menu. This is where you kind of fine tune some things. Um, there are four things at the top with sliders. Emphasis, maximum word count, tightness, and color variation. Every once in a while I play with these. I usually don't change emphasis too much, but just for the sake of doing this, I'm going to put it up to about 100%. My maximum word count, I usually put to about 400. I'm going a little bit too far. I usually just around 400 areas, something close. Um, my tightness, I usually go up to about 120. That's just going to be the tightness of the words, the, um, how close the words can get to each other. I'll leave it at 121. And color variation, I very seldom ever mess with. I try to leave it 50% for half and half. Um, normalized frequency, I usually don't mess with. You can, you can, can choose, you can choose no and change your spread. Um, I usually don't. I usually kind of just leave that like it is because sometimes you can get things too jumbled up looking and things like that. Hard boundary, this one's kind of important. If you bring in a picture or something of your own, you can go, of course, bring in a picture of yourself if you want to. But if you do that, um, keep the hard boundary as yes because it gives the good hard outside so there's no words kind of flying off into space that you don't really know where they go. Um, use source color, I leave as no. Allow replication is yes, though, so you can use words more than one time. Theme preference, I'm going to pick a bright theme just because they, they look better. You can pick dark, friendly, white, whatever you want. Um, and font preference, I'm going to choose um, any one so to keep the same font all the way through. And then I'm going to click accept. Um, you see if I come off, it kind of it goes, the box goes transparent. I can see what it does. But I'm going to go back and click X to get out. And you will see now that when I do all that, it, it changes it just a little bit. It tightens the words up, makes everything really, really close and really, really full looking. Um, and that, that's a good thing you know, when you try to do a face or something like that. For example, I'm going to show you here. Um, I'm going to just going to change this. And there's an option here for um, um, Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to put his face into it just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go back and change the um, the hard boundary. I'm going to take it off once, his face, once Lincoln's face gets on here. You can see this is a real nice look of what it looks like. But if I go back to my word layout, I'm going to, I'm going to tight, change my tightness to something lower. I'm going to take my hard boundary off and leave everything else the same. You will see that it kind of changes it. The way it looks, it makes it a little less easy to recognize sometimes. I, um, it makes it look a little more chaotic in a lot of ways um this one really kept it nice and neat but you can see now here we have two words going down the bottom that weren't there to start with because it picked up on that color shape um that's just an example of what that is um tag zero is one of my favorite tools to use in my class um i use it when i talk to my students about adjectives we can um 
put them into an apple shape and name all the edges. We can think about apples and things like that. Um, I've done it with several several classes of mine as well as some things around the school. Just some examples of ones I've done. Um, we did a huge Black History project two years ago. Um, we picked four Black History um figures. We took Jackie Robinson, which was our, my class's um choice for this one. We picked number forty two because that was his number, and we found out all the words that they after studying on him for a week that we thought really represented him. Again, these are second grade words. Um. I didn't, I didn't edit or anything in any way. If they thought the word fit, then we used it. Um, this is for Martin Luther King Jr. Just the moment he picked with the, we thought it stood for peace. Um, he, they thought it stood for peace, so because they, so they made it into the peace sign shape. They liked that one. This is for Harriet Tubman. This is, um, his actual train for the Underground Railroad. Um, this is for Rosa Parks on the bus. Um, these next ones are ones I've done. I did this one with a fourth grade class. They were studying South Carolina or talking about South Carolina. So they took all the, the counties in South Carolina and made into the shape of the flag, just that um, put in shape of the tree and the moon. Um, this is another example. Somebody found a picture on, on Google Kids they wanted to use, so they inserted the, the um, county names there. Um, once somebody was talking, was studying dogs, they did all the dog names and put in shape of a dog. This is um, MES from Maryville Elementary School. This is something my kid wanted to do. He wanted to try to make a new school shirt. He thought this would be kind of cool. It's got a bunch of teachers' names and adjectives about Maryville and things like that. This is another one he came up with. This one is just all the teachers' names in our school. Um, there you can see my name. I told him I was glad it came out big. He's going to get 100 on that one. But um, that's just so everybody. This is our school um, mascot, the Colt. This is just the same thing, adjectives and words about Maryville. Um, this is different ways to say hi or hello in different various languages. Um, this one is a really cool one. A fifth grade student, this one, and if you, it's kind of hard to see if you get close, but if you back up a little bit, you notice this is actual Martin Luther King Jr. And the same thing that I did, he used the, um, actually she used the I Have a Dream speech and actually found this. We looked for two days to find this shape of Martin Luther King Jr.'s head. Here's his eyebrows, his eyes, eyebrow, nose, lips here, under his chin, and his ear over here. I thought that one turned out really, really well. They were really, 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 really pleased with it. That's one of the better ones of MLK that I've seen. Um, I'm back to Jackie Robinson. But Tag Zito is a pretty cool tool. Um, it's really easy to use. It's fun to play with. The kids really like it. And it's really, it's, it's easy for all students as long as they have a little bit of technology. A little bit um, technology savvy about them. They can figure out how to do this. You have to walk them through a little bit. But, but they can all do it pretty well. Um, use it in your class and see what you can come up with. See what you like.